we're going to look at uh, Luke this morning. Luke chapter 12, and we're going to begin with verse 49. Christ is uh, speaking. He says, I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. Do you suppose that I have come to give peace on the earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. From now on, five and one house will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Let's go ahead. Get to our Lord. Our Father, as we come to you in the name of Christ, we just pray that you be with us as we look upon your word. We pray that you'll guide us, direct us, and we'll be able to take this and apply it to our lives this morning. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Christ makes this statement. He said, I come to give you peace. And he says, not as the world gives peace, but a peace with him, a peace with God. As we look at this particular passage, we begin to understand some of what Christ is talking about. As we think about, you know, we come into the Christmas holidays and uh, we come into all this time where people are talking about peace on earth or things of that nature. Some of the hymns actually talk about it. Christ actually came to bring something else on the earth. And he came and he brought a division on this earth. And, and you take a look at the, what he says here, I came to send fire on the earth. Fire is a pretty destructive force, isn't it? But it's also a cleansing force. Uh, if you take that fire, you can do a lot of good things with it. And you can do a lot of purifying things with it. You can clean up a lot of dead brush uh, with it and get rid of a lot of things. And that's part of what Christ is, is talking about. But he's also talking about how that it's going to change things. When Christ came to this earth, things changed. People have to make a choice about Jesus Christ. And if you think about what he says to Peter, he asks Peter a question. He says, who do men say that I am? And he gives him a bunch of answers there. And then he asks him this question. Who do you say that I am? And, and that's an important question to think about. That's an important question to understand. Christianity, a relationship with God, is who is Jesus Christ? It's not I, I go to church. It's not I am a good person. It's not all these other things. It's you have to decide who Jesus Christ is. And I like what he says, I came to send a fire on the earth. I came that the earth is going to be changed by what Jesus Christ done, or what he is going to do as he looks forward in this verse, because he knows what he says, and I wish it were already kindled. Yes. We look back to where it was kindled, if you want to use that word. We look back to where it did happen. You find that on the cross. Think about it. All of the Old Testament, all of the Old Testament laws, all the things in the Old Testament, what did it point toward? It pointed toward Jesus Christ and the cross. Christ lived under the law because he hadn't been crucified yet. But yet, at the same time, Christ brought to us a new relationship. The New Testament, what is the New Testament? It is looking back to the crucifixion of the cross. Everything changes at the cross. Now, we look at that and we see that and we understand that when Christ went to the cross, He said something. It is finished. 
Christ provided the means of salvation. We think about another aspect of that. What happened when he was on the cross? The veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The way was open. And Char has been dealing with this with some people. That's why I looked at her with that one. It's, the way was open to God. So that man could come before him through Jesus Christ. And when he says, I wish it was already kindled, we look back and we understand that it is kindled, it is started in Christ. And, and uh, you know, just a little spark there, a little fire started, but it spreads where? To the whole world. It's not just in Israel. It's the whole world. And the whole world has to decide what they will do with Christ. And Christ refers to that. He says, I have a baptism to be baptized with and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. I can understand that, can't you? He is headed toward the cross. Christ's mission was to come to the cross. Christ's mission was to die for us. Uh, I like what he says as it goes on into verse 51. Do you suppose that I have come to give peace on the earth? I tell you, not at all but rather division. Christ divides people. Shall I go over to Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. Take a look at what he says there. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. There is no middle ground with Christ. There is no middle ground in following Christ. There is no, well, I think I might be a Christian today and not tomorrow. There is no, oh, I'm going to give it a try type stuff. We are either for Him or against Him. There is no middle ground with Jesus Christ. Amen. We either follow Him or we don't. And people have to make that choice of what are they going to do with God. I, I like what it says, if you're not with Him, you're against Him. It's very simple. A person can't say, well, I, I'm... I'm going to be nice and get there. No, they're either for him or against him. Shall I go back to, uh, to Luke, if you will? I want you to notice what he says in that verse. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? The gospel gives peace to those who accept it between them and God. Christ isn't talking about that relationship. He's talking about the relationship between man and man. He's talking about the relationship that exists on the, on the earth. What does the gospel do? Shall I go to Acts chapter 12, or chapter 4 rather, verse 12, if you would. Christ gives us salvation. And people want to have all kinds of ways of getting into heaven. People want to say, well, your way is just as good as mine, or, or something of that nature. But that's not the way it works. Christ says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by him. There is that relationship with God only through Jesus Christ. Peter writes, he says, or Peter speaks, and says, Nor is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There is no other means than through Jesus Christ. And people don't like that. People don't like to be told that they're a sinner. People don't like to be told that they need Jesus Christ. People don't like to be told that it's uh, okay to, or not okay to live their life the way they want to and still expect to get to heaven. They don't want to hear that there is salvation only in Jesus Christ. So as we come into this time of the season where people are talking about all this peace and stuff like that, there is a division among men. So I go back to, to Matthew, if you would. And I want you to notice what he says. He says, do you suppose I've come? Not for peace, but rather division. Start going over to John chapter, uh, lost it here. John chapter 7, if you would. 
Now I want you to notice some things here. And as you read that, there were many of the crowd when they heard this saying said, truly this is the uh, is a prophet. Others said this is the Christ. But some said, well, Christ come out of Galilee. Has not the scripture said that Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him. There is still that <coughs> division today. There's only one way to solve that division, by the way. And that's for everybody to accept Christ. Notice I didn't say for everybody to reject him, but yeah, it's for everybody to accept him because that's the only means of salvation. We celebrated Thanksgiving. We will celebrate Christmas. Both are Christian holidays. And it's amazing that the world as a whole doesn't understand that. There's a town in Indiana that decided they didn't want to offend anybody. So they renamed Good Friday to Spring Holiday. How nice of them. <laughs> you know, they didn't want to offend anybody except Christians, I guess. You see, we take a stand for Jesus Christ. And that stand in and of itself causes a division. <clears throat> Why? Because they don't want to accept him. They don't want what he has. Look at their discussion. Well, this is the Christ. No, he's a prophet. Well, he can't be a Christ because he didn't come out of Bethlehem. Well, he, well yeah, he did. Uh, you know. Uh, so there was a division among the people. They, well, we know too much. I, I love when people sit, tell that to me. Well, we're in the 21st century. Get with it. Yes. I used to hear that when we were in the 20th century. I guess they probably even said that in the 18th century and so forth. Jesus Christ doesn't. That's another thing that causes division, by the way. From now on, Sean, you go back to Luke, if you would. From now on, five in the house will be divided, three against two, and two against three. You look at that, and you think about what Christ is talking about. Christianity is a personal relationship with God. I am not a Christian simply because my mom and dad are Christians. My children are not Christians simply because they come from a family that follows Christ. It helps, don't get me wrong, it helps. But they have to have their own relationship with Jesus Christ. A household can be divided because some will accept Christ and some won't. Shall I go on into the, to the next couple verses, if you will? I want you to notice where he says father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Except for those last two, Christ divides family. Think about that. Christ was speaking in the book of Matthew and his mother and his brothers came to him to take him away and uh, I don't know what all they were planning on doing with that. But Christ asked this question, Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? And then he went on to talk about who that was. And he says it's the one who does the will of his father. 
You see, what Christ was saying there, what Christ is saying here, is that His relationship is stronger than blood. That's quite a strength when you think about it. My mom, and she'll watch this video, she tells me she does every Sunday, but my mom used to take aspirin before, or Alka-Seltzer before the bus would come home. Because we were always fighting. Debbie, you find that? <laughs> yeah. We were always fighting and, and, you know, that's just the way we were. But if somebody picked on one of us, all of us, joined together mm -hmm. to make sure he didn't do it again. You didn't pick sides against us because we would all fight together. And I think that's probably another reason mom took out the cell <laughs> And that bond that we have was strong. But Christ puts it this way in, math, in, in, in the Psalms. He says that it's a bond that's stronger than a brother, a friend that is closer than a brother. Father will be divided against son. Why would that be? Because one will accept Jesus Christ and understand the need for Christ, and the other will simply reject him and say, I don't want anything to do with that. And it will break down that bond because the bond we have in God is so much stronger. Uh, I look at a mother against a daughter. Cheryl will go out shopping and she will, for some reason, she always chooses Charlena to go with her. She says it's no fun shopping with me. <laughs> And then she tells me why, and I said, well, yeah, but we just want to get out of the store, don't we? <laughs> Mother and daughter. But there's a bond that is stronger. It's the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to get into mothers-in-laws and daughters-in-laws and things of that nature. I just don't want to get into that aspect of things. God says this, and let's try to go back to the middle section there, verse 51, if you will. <clears throat> we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> it's part of who we are. It's part of our life. But there's a whole world out there that doesn't have it. There's a whole world out there that as we look at the Christmas trees that we've put up and the nativity scene here, there's a whole world out there that don't understand who God is. There's a whole world out there that needs Jesus Christ. I look at this division that he says that he has come and that it is causing, and there is an answer to that division. To share Christ with the world. Do we truly believe that there's a fire that's been started? Do we truly believe that the salvation that Christ provided on the cross is the only way. And if we truly believe that, there's going to be division. But I also like what he says about fixing that. He makes this invitation. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God has that invitation open. 
And as far as I can see throughout the New Testament, he's never said that invitation is closed. He's never said it is over. He said it is there. That is the means to fix the division. But that is also the very cause of it. Let's go ahead and give us our Lord. Our Father, Lord, we understand that there is that division. We understand that there is a person who is either lost or saved. There's no middle ground in, in the situation. We understand that they're either for you or against you. There's no, there's no middle ground there either. And Lord, we understand that it is your word and only your word and only your salvation that can change people's hearts and change people's minds. And Lord, we just ask that this morning that you would help us to see that. And Lord, help us to understand that. Lord, we just ask that you would guide us and direct us. We ask in your name. Amen. The division in Christ. That's partly what this season is about. Because only through Christ can a person's heart be changed? He came to set the world on fire. Came to cause that division. If I was to ask you this morning, how many of you know somebody or have a family member who is not a Christian? I'm sure, all of you could say, yeah, I, I, I have that. And then if I would ask you, how is your relationship with them? You could probably say something like what Rachel said to me the other day. It's a horrible Thanksgiving because there's so many things we can't talk about, and one of them is God. Uh, well, I would ask you to pray for that individual, to pray for that family member, to pray for that person, to commit during this season to say, I will pray for whoever it might be. Because that division, we can't heal it. We can't make it go away. Only God can. And only accepting Christ can. So this morning, as we stand and as we sing, will you make a commitment? You don't have to come up here to make that commitment. You can make that commitment right there. But will you make a commitment to say, I will pray for this family member, this friend, or whoever it might be, that God would use me or someone else to share the gospel of Christ with them. Just to make that commitment to say, well, we want this division gone. We want them to know Jesus Christ. Let's all stand and take <laughs> When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. The world's do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust.
stars started decorating uh, the church, and uh, there'll be more decorations later. Uh, I want to thank her for what she's been doing uh, with that. Wednesday night we have the uh, light meal and uh, followed by Bible study, and uh, I want to encourage you to come be part of that. It'll be at six o'clock. Very good. So I want to encourage you to come and, and be part of that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it last week. Um, are there, there's women's, uh, yeah, women's? We had a good men's breakfast. Yeah, we had a good men's breakfast. Yes. Women's breakfast is coming up. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember. But uh, that's coming up. I hope you all can come and be part of that. Is there any other announcements that we need to take care of, Cheryl? Our annual Christmas dinner will be December 18th at 6 o'clock p.m. And um, if you'd like to bring a little Christmas dessert, that would be wonderful. But you don't have to. Okay. But I hadn't even thought that far ahead. That's <laughs> coming up. 18th, Cheryl says Saturday. The eight, Sunday, Sunday evening. 18th, okay. Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Sunday evening, here, so. 6 o'clock, 8 or 6 p.m., okay. the 18th, right here. Okay. Okay. Mice. We will have mice. <laughs> yes. Okay. Any other announcements we need to make this morning? Okay. 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 We're going to close with the chorus of Freely Freely. He said, Freely.